Hello and welcome to the Sound of Science, the place where we deconstruct unscientific reasoning. Please consider to like and subscribe if you support science. Thanks for watching. All right. Is that Michael, you there? Oh, yes, I am here. Hey, you're on with Don and Matt. Hello and thanks for watching. Today we're going to break down another episode of The Atheist Experience. And this time we have caller Michael who wishes to explain why he thinks that the world was created by a god. Because according to Michael, the world around us and the universe as a whole show signs of what he and many theists call intelligent design. <laughs> but intelligent design is more than an idea that just seems to be very silly. As most of you probably know, Intelligent design is even a form of fake science. And some Christians even push American politics into including intelligent design into the American education system. And that seems totally nonsensical because the main premises of the intelligent design idea are that the universe has order and complexity and therefore, so some Christians say, the universe must be designed. But these premises are so empty and lack any basic support in the form of evidence or even formal logic that one would think we perhaps should just dismiss them and move on to something relevant. <sighs> but of course, we ourselves do uphold the principles of scientific thinking. So let's be patient. I'll try it, I promise. And let's listen to Michael who explains his ideas about intelligent design. So I want to ask you, uh, do you believe that there is intelligent life out there or on this planet? Is there any intelligent life? Is there any intelligent? Yes, <laughs> I, I am intelligent life. So. Okay, so you believe humans are intelligent life? Yep. Uh, Why well, do you believe that? Uh, we're life and because... we have intelligence. So what Michael seems to be trying here is to achieve some kind of definition of intelligence. That in itself is okay, I'm not going to raise any yellow or red flags here. But there is one small detail I noticed, and that is that Michael, for a couple of times, is not directly addressing the answers that Matt and Don give him. To make observations, process his observations, and reflect on those. Hmm. I see. That probably counts as some version of intelligence. It's just not the same mm. as ours. Okay. Uh, and so, so one more little preliminary thing. He does kind of, uh, um, yeah. And then he moves on to the next topic. As if the answer that Matt and Don gave him doesn't serve any purpose for him. And that is a typical sign of script reading. So he can check the box and move on to the next box. But I promise to be patient. So let's listen to what else Michael's got to say. The things that humans build and design, you know, just pick anything, a house, a car, whatever, computers, like you were saying, um, is that indicative of an intelligence? We only, you see, can tell we only see elements of design because we've demonstrated that these things are in fact designed up to now, Michael has got nothing new to offer. He's still at the beginning of his script and so far we've recognized the steps that he is making. First establish that intelligence exists, nothing wrong with that. Then establish that design exists, again fine with that. But then comes the tricky part and that is where Michael is now. Because if he wants to make a case for intelligent design, he now needs to establish how we can recognize design. And the usual way creationists do that is by claiming that order and complexity are exclusive attributes of design. In other words, we can recognize design by complexity and order. And then the next step, of course, is that if we see something that has order and complexity, it must be designed. And that, of course, is complete nonsense. Order and complexity are not exclusive attributes of design. So, so looking at nature, we can see that there is a uh, level of complexity 
that complexity isn't designed. Not design. No, 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 no. Uh, hey, no, look, no, you, you, no, 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 no. You are simply wrong. Let me first show you why complexity is not an exclusive attribute of design. Meet the triangle. It's a musical instrument that has been around for centuries. And during all these years, the basic design of the triangle has never changed. Why is that? Because the design is so simple that it hardly needs improvement. We can make it more complicated, but then it wouldn't work. Now I will show you that there are very complex physical constellations that are definitely not designed. I can take an enormous sheet of glass and break it with a hammer into a million pieces. When those pieces are lying on the ground right in front of you, will you be able to memorize their pattern and then reproduce it in a drawing? Can you pick up those million pieces of glass and then put them back in the exact same order? No, you can't because the pattern is too complicated for the human brain to reproduce. But that doesn't mean that that complicated pattern of a million pieces of glass is designed. It's highly complicated, yet totally random. So design does not need to be complicated, and complicated things don't need to be designed. Now let us look at things that have order. For example, if I throw a rock in a lake, it will cause a sequence of perfect circles that will move in the same direction at the same speed. That is order, but it's not designed. Now look at a bed of rocks at the bottom of a river that all have about the same size and shape, and they're all kind of facing the same direction, because these rocks have been lying there for thousands of years. Billions of sand particles have collided with these rocks, giving them similar shapes and sizes, and the water forces those rocks in about the same direction, we see order and complexity, but it was not designed. How about a tropical storm seen from space? The storm circles around a central focal point that is about in the middle, and all the parts of the storm move in the same direction. We see order and complexity, but that storm was not designed. All these examples show that order and complexity are not exclusive attributes of design. So if we see something that has order and complexity, we cannot conclude that it is designed. So suggesting that things like trees or human organs have a very high level of complexity and therefore they must be designed, that is going to get you nowhere. It's nonsense. To the contrary, the whole point of design is creating functionality and aesthetics with as little complexity as needed, because complexity can compromise the design and make it useless. So first of all, complexity is not a hallmark of design. Simplicity is. The better the That's design, fine. the simpler it is. Oh, really? But, yes. Really, you think so? I, I not only... Uh, well, are you laughing? It, it, are you laughing? It's either way. Are you laughing? It, it, so, the discussion is already going south in an early stage now. As I explained and showed, complexity is not an attribute of design. And Matt rightly points out that simplicity is a hallmark of design. Good designers usually try to create as much functionality in the simplest way possible. And Michael is now laughing at this idea and clearly annoying Matt Dillahunty. It looks as if Michael really doesn't understand the concept of design. But it's getting worse, because Michael is now getting to the point where he doesn't even understand the concept of his own fictional creationist talking points anymore. Oh dear. It's simple or complex, it doesn't mean that it is or it isn't. Correct! Thank you! You just made my point for me. Complexity is not indicative of design you cannot that look at you, can, you cannot look at something i know i didn't say you made your point i said you made my point oh i see you cannot Go look ahead. at something and say hey this is really complex it must have been designed that's a fallacy okay yeah fair enough I, that that wasn't necessarily my my point i bet you a dollar uh, it was michael is on to an epic fail here Complexity and order are the cornerstones of the intelligent design concept, and Michael, who basically called in to propagate intelligent design, is dropping one of those cornerstones in a matter of minutes. He now even says that the complexity argument wasn't really his point in the first place. Sure, let's see if he will stick to that. Well, no, I, what I was saying is that when, when you 
look at something in nature, what I was going to say is that it's more complex than anything humans can design. First of all, yes. uh, I don't necessarily know that that's true because there's a difference between what humans can, have. Can, can, can I finish this sentence? Hundred thousand. Jesus, uh, if you'd let me finish this sentence, if you'd let me finish the sentence, you would have already had your answer and not look like a jackass. Oh, okay. There's a difference between what humans can, a level of complexity that humans can achieve, versus what humans have achieved. That you have, there's, no, there's no demonstration, for example, that it is impossible for human beings to design life from scratch. The fact that we haven't done it doesn't mean that that is not possible. Matt is totally right about that. The fact that humans haven't designed a particular thing doesn't mean that they can't do it. The evidence for that lies in history. 500 years ago, man had not designed a combustion engine yet. But that doesn't mean that man cannot design a combustion engine as we know now. Claiming that something is too complicated for man to design is a claim that requires evidence. And of course, Michael doesn't provide any. He just says, wow, a tree is so complicated, man could not have designed such a thing. How do you know? And even if it were to be true, you still haven't provided evidence that it was designed in the first place. And even if you had that evidence, you still wouldn't have proved that a god did it. And on top of that, it's dishonest for Michael to return to this complexity argument because he already admitted that complexity does not show design. Okay, um, so that is true and, and I do want to avoid that type of, of you know, yes or no type of um, questioning and answering. No, Michael, it is not a type of yes or no questioning. What happened is that you made an argument and Matt showed it is flawed. I can imagine that you want to avoid that, but then don't make silly arguments. Take a car, for example. Open up the hood of a car. It's got an engine. It's got, you know, it's all, all of the things that a car has, right? A car has an engine and all the other things a car has. Young Michael here apparently has never opened the hood of a car. So you can look inside a cell and you can see that there are also things like motors which spin at hundreds of thousands of RPMs. Doesn't matter. The issue is here that you're making it an argument. It, it does matter. No, it doesn't. Because no, it doesn't. No, shut up. You're making an argument by analogy. You're saying we can recognize engines and here's something in the cell that looks like an engine. An engine is designed, therefore this thing we acknowledge, look at in the cell that looks like an engine is more likely to have been designed. That is a flawed argument. We, we, Wow, the ignorance is really strong in this one. The argument by analogy is so infamous for being flawed, why would anyone still use it? So, for example, I see an aqueduct and it carries a huge flow of water and that aqueduct is designed. And now I see a river and that carries a big load of water as well. Does that mean that the river is designed? No, of course not. Now I see a tennis ball, and that tennis ball is perfectly round, and it's designed. And then I see a rock, and that rock is perfectly round as well. Does that mean the rock is designed? No, of course not. The argument by analogy is completely flawed. How can Michael not understand this? You've got a tree. It makes an apple. The apple falls. It's sweet. Animals like to eat it. It's palatable. Then they eat it. Their system takes all the nutrients from that thing that's sweet and they wanted to eat it and it breaks all of it down except the seed and it as you were saying passes the turd the seed is in the turd <laughs> and that turd is actually fertilizer i know free to grow i know it's and amazing it, isn't it came about by, by Must be Jesus. W without somebody <laughs> without any design you so, think it just it happened to happen that way i i see it like no michael I see no evidence that it requires an intelligent designer, nor have I seen evidence that it actually is done by an intelligent designer. Not only that, but there is also a perfectly logical and natural explanation for this wonderful process of a sweet apple that falls from a tree and a bird eats and digests it except for the seed. Listen to this, Michael. Guess what happened to all the other apple trees with seeds that were destroyed in the digestion system of the bird's stomach? Guess what? Those kind of apple trees, they don't exist anymore because they couldn't reproduce efficiently. Michael, you just made a case for Darwinian natural selection. Well done.
you know, <laughs> seeing things in nature and seeing how it, you know, it's it's better designed than anything humans have ever designed. No, we have no, it's we not. have more evidence no, for evolution not. than we than we have for almost anything. I'm not. Saying no, it's it's not better designed. If I could design a better human being in a heartbeat by not making it possible for me to choke by having me breathe and drink out of the same orifice. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and do that then. Um, if, I, I just yeah. did. I didn't say I could make one from scratch. I didn't say I can construct human evolution. But if I were in this position of a designer and you're talking about how much better it is than something humans could have designed, I can come up with a design that's better. Matt makes a very good point here because the world we live in of course is a huge mess and if it was designed, it has got nothing to do with intelligence always wondered what is the added value of the word intelligent in this concept. Does it mean the designer was intelligent? Perhaps they want to distinguish it from stupid design. Because I don't think most theists want to debate about stupid design. Because if this universe was designed by some powerful creator, he must have been totally incompetent. If this world around me is a design, then it's utterly stupid and all of us puny humans could design a better world in minutes. Why would an intelligent designer create cancer, Alzheimer's disease, cholera, malaria and the bubonic plague? Millions of people and even small children die of these horrible diseases every year. How about not designing violent character traits like aggression, hate and revenge by simply not making the effort of creating all these horrible character traits? This so-called intelligent designer could have made a far better world. A world without famine, a world without war, a world without torture and murder. But somehow, Many Christians think that their God did include deadly diseases and aggression in his design. So why would they call this intelligent? Or perhaps all of this misery was intentional. In that case, we're dealing with a very cruel designer who wants us to suffer. It's either that or incompetence. On a lighter note, now comes a section of the conversation that you really shouldn't miss because it's hilarious. Matt says he could make a better design for the human body and his example is that he would not combine the sexual organs with the waste organs. Makes sense, doesn't it? But Michael, he doesn't get it. I could make it so that the fun factory and the waste disposal are not the same thing. <laughs> That's like our little bitty scale of let's make a place, you know, where you can go have fun in a place that processes sewage. Like, no, I'm, nature has. Did you really miss do. the point that I was talking about genitals and the fact that that that's the fun factory I'm talking about, where waste also comes out? I totally missed that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to biology. Yeah, totally funny. And slowly but surely, we're ending up at the section of the conversation where it takes Michael longer and longer to twist his answer into a direction in which he doesn't have to admit that if the universe were designed, it was very poor design. And we puny humans can do a much better job than their Christian God who supposedly designed the universe. And this is a position where creationists really don't want to end up because it totally destroys their intelligent design concept. And that is exactly what is happening to Michael here. Is it possible for this intelligent designer that you believe exists to design a place that is better than this universe? Is it possible? Of course. Okay, that's the point. Okay, so I don't understand what you proved. Then let me help you out. Matt just showed that your concept of intelligent design is complete bogus and you agreed without understanding it. That is what Matt proved. Okay, this universe you think is better than anything humans could design. And yet you and I can both agree on a design that would be better, right? Well, now you're now you're challenging. Is that a yes or a no? Levels of infinity. There's an infinity, but there's a bigger infinity. Like you know, I, where's I don't have patience in infinity. So can we agree that you and I could design a place that is better than this universe? 
and Michael is thinking and thinking again. If I say yes, then intelligent design turns out to be stupid design. And if I say no, I have to explain why it is a good idea to combine sexual organs with piss and poop organs. Oh man, why did my friends push me to make this phone call? Could I? D design? Or is there nothing? Design? Oh my God, Michael, this is so frustrating. I couldn't design. Uh, stop. Of course I can't stop. design the universe. What are you talking about? As the Joker would say, I know the squealers when I see them. What? Is there anything about the universe that you think could be better? Well, here's the thing. God damn. My knowledge of the universe is so limited, even okay. on this world. I then go, the go somewhere else and talk to Maybe somebody else there. about it then, because I absolutely think there are things in the universe that could be improved upon. Don, what would you like to, what, what do you think could improve about the universe? <laughs> I'll get a long list. <laughs> Just one thing. What what could be improved oh, about the Oh, I don't know. How about how about uh, you don't have to suffer so much before you die? How about hey. that? Or you could live twice as long. Sounds great to me. I like Maybe it. we remove skin cancer. We keep all the other cancers. We keep all the other problems. We just get rid of skin cancer. I'm I'm all for that. That's just fine. Yes, it's that simple. The universe is one big mess. It's full of flaws. And if you and I would have designed it we would not have included horrible diseases, war, famine, murder, torture, etc. It's really that simple. We can do a better job than the supposed God of the Bible. The immeasurable suffering in this universe shows that if it is created and designed by some all-powerful deity, then he is completely incompetent or he is a complete thug. You and I can design a better universe in minutes. Everyone can. And that totally annihilates the idea of intelligent design. Let me sum this up for you and maybe that will help you to encounter creationists in debates, be it face to face or perhaps in the comments below one of my videos. Intelligent design is the idea that the universe and everything in it were designed by a god and complexity and order of the things we see around us is supposed to show that design. And that is nonsense for four reasons. First. Complexity and order are not specific attributes of design. Complexity and order exist in a natural way without the need of design. There are many examples of that, for example a bed of perfectly round rocks with about the same size at the bottom of a river. It shows order and complexity but it's not designed. How about the range of circles that appear when I throw a rock in the water? that is order and complexity without design. Another example is a tropical storm seen from space. The circular shape and movement of the storm display order and complexity but the storm is not designed. Second, the universe is a big mess with many flaws. Humans could design a better place. Third, there is no evidence for the existence of a universe creating designer in the first place. And fourth, there is no evidence for the existence of the universe being a design. Case closed. Until creationists solve these matters, we don't have to see intelligent design as an idea worthy of any contemplating. We could spend our time on more important things, like actually improving this world and correcting the supposed God's mistakes, if you will. So, that was it for today. I know some of you are sitting behind your desk listening to me, some of you are commuting to your work and some of you are perhaps watching a few of your favorite YouTubers before you go to sleep. Wherever you are, whoever you are, I wish you all the best. Take care and I'll see you at the next video.